So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever this is. This is Matthew Bailey alongside special guest Tracy Hutchins. Hey, hi everybody. Samali Polanyi. Happy Halloween season, everyone. And for the first time ever in Retro Circuit Reviews slash BS Beats and Bailey, Alice Oscura. Hi guys, how are you? And this is a special episode of Retrospect Reviews where we will be talking about our individual picks for top and bottom horror movie franchise, including, um, well, in this case, we're going to do a runner up for each one. So it's going to be an honorable mention and a dishonorable mention. So just to, to kick things off, right? Um, this was really hard to do. Reason being is because as much as I, you know, really appreciate and respect and love the genre of horror, um, I am admittedly not a completionist when it comes to particular horror movie franchises. Because, you know, as much as we, we, we have certain, you know, films that, you know, um, like, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Streets or the Friday 13th or the Halloweens themselves, you know what I mean, on such a high pedestal, sometimes the sequels by... Mm-mm. Yeah, sometimes we off <laughs> with the sequels at times. It's just so hard to defend them, you know what I mean? But in this case here, we just really want to talk about the franchises where most, if not all, of the films, you know, really stuck with us in, you know, in, in good ways. Um, yeah. In terms of the bad ones, well, yeah, those were the ones that even though they were just going down, just sinking down into this, you know... Um, pit of despair. Yeah, pit of despair. <laughs> I was going to say quicksand, actually. This, this pit of fear. Um, we just we just stuck with it because, you know, deep down in our souls, we were like, okay, it, it should get better, right? Because we know how it could get better. It's just mm-hmm. if, oh, if the creators can read our minds somehow and make it work. But no, it just keeps, it just keeps going down the hell. So yeah, that's what we're going to cover here, right? We'll do our um, Dishonorables first, then we'll do the picks for worse uh, horror movie franchise, and then we're going to do the same thing for the best ones, right? So honorable mention, and then the best ones, right? So I might as well kick things off, right, with uh, my Dishonorable mention as far as, you know, horror movie franchise. This one is kind of interesting for me because it relates so much to my pick for, for best horror franchise, right? And hopefully you'll you'll understand. I don't want to... I uh, don't want to let the cat out the bag immediately, right? <laughs> so, um, 2013, right? You know, um, Game of Thrones was big, you know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. this was around mm-hmm. season three, right? So, um, this was when we were, you know, when when no one, ex- except for the ones who, who read the books, knew about the Red Wedding coming up now. So, okay. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it was, it was that era. It was, it was that time where we didn't know what was coming, right? And then that event hit, and we were all shocked. And you know, he was like, "We would, we would just change forever, right?" Right. And you thought, like in my head, I thought, "Okay, nothing else on TV could ever top the shock that that moment in Game of Thrones did." <laughs> and then Sharknado came out. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my. Yes, god. folks. My dishonorable mention is the Sharknado <laughs> franchise. I did not even remember Sharknado as a franchise. Oh my god, no. <laughs> my goodness, it's, it's a franchise. No, it's like my brain wanted to block it out. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and, I, and I know what I'll take. I know what I'll take it. But, but, but Matthew, this is not this is a horror film. No, it's just a dumb sci-fi movie, right? <laughs> but, 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 I mean sci-fi in it's terms of fine. the, the it's, station. It's <laughs> yeah, it, it was the cable channel as well too, and the genre itself. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's sharks killing humans. I mean, it's horror, right? It, it yeah. it's been horror ever since it was introduced in Jaws, right? Since mm-hmm. it was in right. um, Deep Blue Sea, right? It's yeah. it's it's in horror, right? Even though in this case, it's just the least horrific thing you'll ever see, right? But I'll get to the to the Game of Thrones stuff in a little bit, right? But yeah, Sharknado came out. I remember the hype surrounding this thing, right? And I mean, back then, you know, you saw the little creature features that sci-fi would pump out every weekend, right? Mm-hmm. But this one in particular was different, man. I mean, it was yeah. it was a friggin' tornado with sharks in it. <laughs> and I don't know, like, like, there's no way it could, it could, it could talk <laughs> anything beyond that, though. It's just, this is what it is. So you, is, is either you want to see it or not, right? So I, I, I checked it out. I watched it for myself. 
I had a blast actually. I was laughing my ass off at this, right? It was so funny. It was so bad as well, too. But you could tell in the back of the minds they knew that they were making a bad movie. And when I say yes. the uh, the production company, the infamous the asylum, yes, you know what I mean, who has been responsible for making films like this, right? And mockbots m- mockbusters, sorry, over the you know, past decade or such, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um seeing Ian Zering, who I mean I've people think Ian Zering. Since, since Isn't it pronounced Iron? I always wonder about that. I could swear I've heard people say Ian Zering. It's oh, such a it, weird thing. Ian, uh, Ian, I okay. I, I call him Ian, right? But yeah. I should um, never pronounce his surname. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but um, I'm, 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 I'm wrapping up. Don't worry. I don't, I don't want to do a whole essay about this thing, right? Um, Tara reading it as well. And, you know, just the premise was just so crazy, right? Um, but they really had me at a tornado with sharks, right? And not no, just that, right? The tornado keeps moving across from like state to state, <laughs> dropping sharks, and they're moving on land, eh? not just water. <laughs> when they fall from the sky, they are ch- they, they are like literally like s- gulping at people's heads and limbs and stuff like that, and it looks horribly bad. Eh? But it's funny as well. But the moment where I said, "Okay, this is something that's groundbreaking," right? So I got to spoil some here. Near the, near the end of the movie, right? There's a moment where our hero is trying to save this um, a side character by the name of Nova, right? She got swallowed five mm-hmm. minutes ago, right? Five mm-hmm. minutes oh ago. Oh my god, I think shot, I never right? seen. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember. She's it. on the yeah. ground. <laughs> that chainsaw. Yes. The chainsaw. Remember <laughs> the weapon chainsaw in this episode, right? Yes. He jumps into a, the mouth of a shark, right? That is aiming <laughs> at him. Cuts his way out of its stomach <laughs> and pulls Nova out who is unharmed except for just blood all over her body. Mm-hmm. First time I saw that, guys, my jaw hit the floor. <laughs> I nearly went insane when I saw that. Like, wow. just when I thought the the, 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 um, the Red Wedding was the most insane thing I saw for 2013, <laughs> that moment hit me and I was like, oh, my God, the balls you have to have to put that out on, on screen for people to watch. <laughs> but it was amazing. It was a really amazing moment. So overall, yes, it's one of those movies you have to be in, inebriated to enjoy, right? And I know people will just dismiss it because it's dumb, right? But that moment in, in particular, I was like, all right, okay, okay. What? They're going to have a next one? Okay. And the next year, it was called Shark Needle to the second one, right? Mm-hmm. And this one was more self-aware. The budget was bigger. They set it in New York instead of LA. They had tons and tons of cameos. And it just felt like everybody was just winking at the camera. But at that time, though, people just picked up on just how fun and dumb, you know, it was that the premise was, right? Even mm-hmm. though technically it is a remake kind of of the first one. Or so reminiscent of my pick for best one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so from that point, though, what, what I noticed was how big of a cultural phenomenon it was and social media yeah. um, phenomenon as well too because yeah in between the breaks the commercial breaks they told um you know sci-fi was saying hey go on twitter check and see what people were, were, were saying about it right mm-hmm. and from then i was like oh okay this is what they're trying to do they're trying to create a cult film you know a cult classic now, right. like right in front of our eyes and i thought that was quite fascinating how they right. did that right i thought okay that was it all right and then they went to Part three. Oh hell no. That's the title. Shark Needle Tree. Oh hell no. I say okay. That's, that's literally how oh, no. most of us felt. Yes. Yeah. I say okay. True. All right. We, we, we're doing a third one. All right. Let, let's see if it still have energy in it. All right. It, it kind of does. They're bringing in more cameos. Okay. David Hasselhoff is in there. He's playing um, Ian. Well, his character name is Finn. Yes. Haha. Right. His name is Finn. Right. Um, Finn's um, dad and they go uh, oh oh and oh and also even more important they went to space now so we have sharks in space with well, laser you have, beams. To say it. you have to say it like um Muppet Show sharks, sharks in space. Space. <laughs> <laughs> yes so I was like all right oh and I forgot to mention too um wait for this sir. so there's there's a there's a section the early section of the film that's set in um, Universal Studios right in Florida and one of the the, the the cameos in the film just so happens to be but it's one of those moments where 
you kind of blink and you miss it. It's only like when you went for the break, you went on Twitter. Because that's what I did. I went mm. on Twitter. I was just tweeting just stuff like crazy. And I saw George R. R. Martin make an appearance in this show. Oh, my he got, God. He got, he got killed by a shark in this movie. <laughs> wow. Swear to God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was how big the phenomenon was. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Just keep it dumb. <laughs> Have a set of cameos, you know, keep winking mm-hmm. in the camera. All right, this, yes, is, yes. this is fascinating. I like this, right? And then it just kept going. We had Shark Needle, the Fort Awakens. Yes. Yes. Oh my God, I remember that Mo- post now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It, it, it's, it's around the time when the Force Awakens Star Wars came out, yeah, right? So that, yeah. that's where we at, right? And wow. then the franchise, like, if it, didn't, if it wasn't going downhill at that point, it went yeah. completely at this point, but all the ideas felt tired and steel. It is even to the point that the shark needle itself will encounter different, like, so case the point. There has a point, there has a moment where they hit a tornado, sorry, a, a volcano. So it turns to a lava. Tornado hit a volcano? Yeah. Oh. And it turns <laughs> into a lava shark needle. There's a moment wow. where it hits nuclear waste and it becomes like some nuclear shark needle, some kind of thing like that. And in throughout the series, there's always a character that would say, that's a shark needle or it's a da 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 needle. They always do that. And it's so dumb, right? But yeah, it just went nowhere. It was just just painfully annoying to watch. And I said, all right, I'm done with this, right? Guys, but then, you know what I'm picturing as you said that? Well, that yeah. scene in Man of Steel where Jonathan Kent gets hit by a tornado oh, and he's picturing yes. oh, sharks no. in the tornado. <laughs> yes. Take him away <laughs> one time. Oh he had to save people. He had to save them. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I, told, I told myself, all right, this is the fourth one. It has to end, yeah? And then it kept oh. going because they had a sting at the end. Yes. Now we have Shark Needle 5, Global Swarming. Oh. <laughs> is that the time traveling one? Yes. Yeah, this was one, right? Yes, I remember that vaguely. Yeah, yeah this <laughs> this was where this was the nadir of the of the franchise where you have you 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 up for time travel to keep this story going. Yeah. You have stuff about you know um talismans and you know in the Egyptians there was a shark god that men worshipped and. Oh this thing and literally Finn and Nova who shows back up starts the event because they, they went in this cave a la Indiana Jones readers the lost arc pull this thing out and literally sh- cause a shark needle to happen and it kills a bunch of people um in, in, in London and you know because we're in London they have to drop a lot of like really like lean jokes like oh London Bridge is falling down swear oh to god God's. somebody says <laughs> that in that show yes um, and how I know this is because I actually gave up on the franchise with, you know, the fourth one. But then with this review here, with this episode here, I told myself, all right, let me actually suffer through these last two. Let me just watch them out. See if they actually have something of worth. And no, they didn't. Not even this one. Not even the final film. The last Shark Needle, It's About Time. Which which actually is a, a two-parter. Because, yeah, um, Global Swarming pretty much ended with the world pretty much being, well, coming to an end now because of a bunch of shark needles all over the world, right? Don't ask. Right. And our heroes now, well, Finn and, you know, uh, well, Tara Reed's character, uh, wind up in this portal because their son got trapped there and they end up back in time in prehistoric days. This is where the new one, the last one starts. And it is just this mind bleep of <laughs> movie cliches and tropes and it is just so incredibly insane dread it's almost like they just lost the point of of what made Jack Nido great like at this core it was just a simple dumb premise that could have just lasted for three movies but they just went in so much because they felt hey if we throw this at the fans the fans will love it right there's even a moment in the last in the last film where they throw literally everything and the kitchen sink at you they do that like a literal kitchen sink yeah you see a literal kitchen sink <laughs> in <laughs> this big gigantic <laughs> toy <laughs> I, remember, I remember when when that one was coming up because what i used to do is i used to just torment my friends every time the trailer <laughs> come out i just tag all of them tag richard and tag you know my friend nigel and all of them just be like look it's another one and i remember they were they were going back to noah's ark and all kind of stuff in the time traveling one i was like okay i i 
I can't. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't. It's, 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 it's a lot, boy. Especially those last two. It's just too much to take in. And you're almost warning if it's just this this half ass effort to to be weird and, you know, culty, right? As yeah. opposed to just telling a story that will entertain. It's it's fan base, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm a fan base just kinda jump ship, you know what I mean, after the fourth film. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. I, I'm sorry, at the end of the day, and I'll wrap up here, it's just one joke being told six times. <laughs> That's what Shark Nido is. Yeah. It's a tone you do with sharks in it that goes from place to place and shark needles sorry, sharks drop off on the sky and kill people in dumb ways. And ever so often humans will fight back with like a gun or a guitar and it'll just be all these unnecessary cameos. Like and I'll stop here. I'll, pr- I'll promise I'll stop here. It's so bad, guys, in terms of the, the cameos themselves. And I talk about they go in for like two thousands figures, eh? Yeah. They put I think Rep it's like Michaels. every actor that could not find work at that point yeah. has been in a yeah. yeah. Literally, like you have um with his um dog with his um dog the bounty hunter, he made mm. an appearance in it. Um David Allen Greer oh, from the no. from, from the color, he was in the fourth one. Um mm. Brett Michaels from Rock of Love. Anybody remember Rock of Love? Nope. I remember Brett Michaels as a wrestler. I don't remember him. Oh, yes. I think I vaguely remember Rock of Love. Now, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm mixing him up with Bret Hart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll stop here, I promise, right? It was even so bad, right? Keep him with with VH1 for a bit. They brought in New York from Love and New York. I remember New York. To be in this show. To be in the fifth one. Oh Jesus. Not nothing else I could say from that point. When you when you have when you have no one else to pick from and you just have just you know scraps. Bottom the bar and the best you could pull is New York. Not a real name, of course, from Love and New York, right? Yeah. Oh sorry, Flavor of Love, sorry. I keep Flavor yeah. of Love, yes, yes. And, yeah, I think she was she she, she had, had a love her own series, yeah, yeah. She had her own series afterwards. Whose whose claim to fame was having a show where she was dating Fleaver Fleav. Hmm. That that that's that's all I need to know <laughs> going forward about this franchise. So yeah, that's my dishonorable mention because as much as I I, I could gr- um you know gr- as much as I have so much anger towards how how low the series went, there's another franchise boy where which sorry is even more this way. Anywho, uh, Alice, what is your dishonorable mention? What's your for for least um, huh? favorite? Horror movie franchise. Actually, it's The Purge. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, but... I stopped at the third one. I haven't seen the last one. I heard it was the best, kind of. I don't the know, but the I um, wouldn't say so. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. The, the only thing, the ones that had Frank Grillo in it, yeah. they, they were okay. <laughs> That was the only yeah. redeemable character in the entire thing. I don't like the... My thing about the franchise is I don't like the idea of the purge. Um, what what it's endorsing. This right. this thing about um, this lockdown every year and you could kill anybody. I, I don't like it. I mean, it, it sounds weird coming from somebody that likes to watch slasher horrors. Yeah. But to me, I just think that it, it's... Somehow it doesn't ring the right bell for me socially. I, I don't like what it's encouraging the entire franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's so much flaws you could pick from it. They're like, okay, mm-hmm. well, if you stay inside, then you won't be harmed. So why it is I have people who want to break inside my house to kill me now. Exactly. I mean, exactly. I don't want to be a part of it. That's why I endorse. So why are you trying to kill me? Yes, so like, me which happened in exactly. film, right? So, yes, yeah. exactly. And here's the other thing, too. They choose so many unlikable characters. It's like, how am I supposed to get behind you when I don't even like you because you make these stupid decisions? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, oh my goodness. It's kind of like the, the proverbial phrase of the dumb blonde running up the stairs when she should be running out the door kind of thing right. in these horror yeah. movies. Right. And it's like, like I told you, the only character I liked in the entire franchise was Frank Grillo's character. Everybody else, I, I just really couldn't give, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. Anything and I, I think another thing that was that was that was really like not off putting for me was just kind of silly. Um, mm-hmm. was just how crazy these characters with Akna. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You'll put on a mask and just be like, you know, we did this this be like psychotic over to the, the point top, of just being yes. a cartoon, you know? Yeah, 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 over the top, just sadistic for, for no reason at all. Right. They'd be like they would be like, okay, normal family man kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, just because this one day of the year, the purge, you all of a sudden psychotic. Yeah. And, yeah. and you want to kill your neighbor because maybe he, his dog do something in your yard or, you know, it's, it's the silliest reasons that they yeah, come up yeah. with to want to wanna kill each other. It's like, I, I just couldn't get behind the franchise because, because of it. It's just unsettling. It, it makes right, me feel right. unsettled every time I look at a Purge movie. <laughs> right. And I take it, yeah, I haven't watched oh, the, um, the Purge TV series, series right? Yeah. No, no. I just couldn't get behind the TV series either. Yeah. I, I Someone just tried to encourage me to watch how, it, but I just couldn't. <laughs> I just want to see personally if they, like, even push any buttons or, you know, the, the, the envelope, you know what I mean? Cause I know it's USA. I mean, it could get away with TV, Emmy stuff, but yeah. I was wondering if they were going to go into, like, really gory graphic walking dead territory with that show not cause... really they didn't they didn't really um it was more pg-13 uh, at least in my in my opinion maybe to right. other people it might seem like oh my god but i mean i watch so much horror to me that's pg-13 you know yeah right yeah. right right okay uh summer your dishonorable mention uh, my dishonorable mention, it starts off strong, but unfortunately, they just never um, kept that momentum going. And that's going to be the Hellraiser franchise. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a huge fan of Clive Barker's work. I really am. I just feel like it's never been properly done. Like, there's certain movies that stand the test of time, like the first two Hellraiser films. I really like it. And what they did there, they did what they did in Halloween, where it's like the uh, story continues in the second one. Mm-hmm. So it almost seems like it's one movie. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really wise choice. And I, I mean, I know for like for uh, Alicia, like she doesn't like the whole pleasure pain. <laughs> I think that's so <laughs> for him. Um, yeah. But uh, for me, it was something very different from what existed then. I mean, most slashers are definitely earthbound. Granted, you might have like somebody who's undead or whatever, but this was actual hell on earth kind of thing going on. Right. And the practical effects were amazing. So the first two Hellraisers, uh, Hellraiser and part two is called Hellbound. I mm-hmm. quite enjoyed that. And then hell on earth went for this kind of gothic ro- uh, rock vibe thing. And okay. I actually remember when, when that came out in theaters way yeah. back in like 192. I remember like, that being a thing. Yeah. yeah, there's like one kind of decent Cenobite in it who can spit out like CDs that your CDs were new at the time. And oh, wow. them up. But the, yeah, the, the, the actual story itself and the main character was so boring that you, you'll forget most of it after you see it. Mm-hmm. And then it gets good again, at least in my opinion, um, Hellraiser Bloodline. I quite like that one. Now, Matthew, this is our Hellraiser in space movie. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. <laughs> Here's the thing. Oh, it's, boy. It's, if, it's one of the few horror films that take the villain into space, and it actually works because um, it follows the entire story of the creation of the box. And... Mm. It goes back in time to the first puzzle maker. So it's following his bloodlines, hence the the name of the movie. Mm -hmm. And there's a big reveal in the end. The reveal being that the guy that we've been seeing, um, because it's the same actor playing all of his uh, ancestors and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he calls upon uh, Pinhead. And you're thinking, okay, well, you know, why would you do this and all of that? And the whole thing is, all through time, he's been trying to dis his... um, is they've been trying to destroy uh, Pinhead's uh, access to Earth with this box. So what he did is it's way in the future, and the entire space station is a puzzle box that closes. What? You know, and it's a, yeah. Interesting. I thought, I thought it was so cool. Honestly, yeah, yeah. It, it worked for me. It really worked for me because you don't see it coming at all. 
you know, oh. and and um and the fact that it jumps into the future makes the space thing believable kind of thing. This is a mm-hmm. hell-based creature. It could go wherever it wants. It's immortal. So mm-hmm. I like that. But after that, wow, it's a bunch of nothing. I don't know <laughs> what went wrong, but there are like, I think there are like about seven or eight of these films. Um, and it wow. just got worse and worse and poor Doug Bradley kept dra- being dragged back into this. He's a man who plays Pinhead. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he's very it's good ten. character. It's about mm-hmm. 10 of them, right? Yeah. And he, it just doesn't work. Uh, most recently, they had one in 2018 called Hellraiser Judgment. It's mm-hmm. very low budget, but it's actually one of the better sequels. For, uh, even though the budget is extremely low, you could tell that there is passion there and that the creators really love the franchise, love the uh, the main story, I guess, you know? Right, right. But it's it's not enough to save this. This just went from bad to worse to worse to... <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the, the, the biggest sin a horror film could commit is being boring. And yeah. the Hellraiser series gets very boring so after bloodline i gave up on it i've seen all of these films by the way you know i I kept hoping for something new but it just it just failed on every level after that so right wow one 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 quick question right sure one quick question is there a hellraiser like i was i was doing a little googling i believe there's a hellraiser that involves him going into the into the internet the world wide web is this true I think that might have been Hell World, Hellraiser Hell World, which was like part eight. So yeah, yeah, it gets they they do the whole it goes on the internet thing, like what the ring did. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like I said, they, they were fresh out of ideas. Mm. <laughs> My goodness. All right, so Tracy. That, that sounds like heights. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It does. So Tracy, what is your dishonorable mention? Uh, well, okay. Let me let me uh, first say this. I um I was telling Matthew that in terms of horror, one, I'm the outlier because you know I I enjoy I very much enjoy sleeping. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> like, I I, I, like, I wish I, I could I could. I, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> like, like, you know, I I really dig sleeping. But I realized two things. One, um, there's a lot of stuff that I have watched that becomes that I, I I go back and I look at it and I was like, wait, hold on, this falls under the horror category. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this is actually interesting. So there's there's some there's some stuff on my list here that I didn't even realize was actual horror. Um, in terms of like the stuff that I that I would watch um, that I would just put down as, oh, this is really cool or this is really interesting or this was a cool concept. And then um, you realize, okay, this falls under the horror category, and then there are one or two, one or two films that, um, and I'll talk about some of them that were explicitly horror. And I decided, look, I I really want to see this because this looks like it could be interesting. Uh, so that's where I live. I'm the outlier. So for like for some of my stuff, I putting together this list was um, like Matthew. It was deeply hilarious trying to put some stuff <laughs> together because I I realized. <laughs> Like I had a moment where I was like, okay, so I I watch musicals and there are some musical horrors. Yes, yeah. Yes, but it's yeah. not. I, I need to watch some. They need there's some to good be ones more out there to too. Be... Uh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's some I, really good ones there too. I mean, I I will tell you a truth. I will get up at any given point in time during the course of the day and just start singing Little Shop of Horrors. That is, <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that's me. And, <laughs> but in terms of of dishonorable, what the one that I chose, you know, you when you have. A movie that starts off, and some of you sort of touched, you touched on it. When you have a movie that starts off a franchise that starts off strong and makes you feel this is a game changer, and then later on it just gets watered down to the point where either you can't deal well, yeah, well, you can't deal with the franchise anymore, and it literally legitimately becomes something that you don't want to to have in your brain. Mm. That's how I feel about Predator. Um, oh, boy. 
good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Yeah. Very, very, very wow. close to, yes. to what I have lined up, but go on. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. Yes, it is. It's yeah. very much how it started off as horror anyway. I don't know what else. Yeah, it, it, it's literally picking the, the, the biggest baddest, well, biggest badasses of the 80s <laughs> and mm-hmm. putting them in a, in a sci-fi slasher film, basically. Oh, That's what this spread is. Yeah, yeah that, that was... Listen, I remember, I because I'm old, um, as luck would have it, <laughs> and I remember seeing that i didn't i didn't see it in theaters i think i must have seen it i, w- I came in late so i must have seen that on um satellite or tv6 or some randomness but i do remember seeing it and the feeling the feeling that i got watching this whole scene player watching arnold watching oh god i'm seeing his face in front of me right now carl, carl weathers carl weathers and seeing the, the that whole dynamic play out now Fast forward to 20, what was it? Summer, what was it? 2017, 2018? Oh, 2018 when the... Yeah, pre- oh, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Right. Which is my pick for... Which was my pick, sorry, for worst movie Worst of 2018. <laughs> I hated it. Hated it. Hated I think it. it was mine as well. I think that, yeah, like, that was... I'm trying to think back, but I think that was at least number two or something like that on my list. It was high I, up there. I get because like I I mean even I did a uh uh when we were coming into 2020 I did like a best of the decade worst of the decade or something like that and mm. and that was inside there as well like Pr- Predator was one of those movies that as it continued on I would glance I would look I would try to watch and yeah okay but you still kind of got excited over the notion of Predator and then yeah. they did stuff like Alien versus Predator which I didn't need at all at all no, no, in my no, life the, the game was fine i mean you know yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, they, you know hello there's there's that and then when i when i i came in i will admit i came in really excited because again i don't i don't necessarily watch horror but there were a few other things that were coming out around that time and i was like okay um i, I might want to see all of this and predator looks like this new predator looks like it could be fun and it is, uh, it, it touts itself as action slash horror. So I'm like, yes. And I sat down for the two and a half or two and 15 minutes, or however long it was. Well, well it, 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 mm. felt, it felt like three hours for me. <laughs> it really does. This is so that, that is true. And, and it, the, the way how it ends, because, okay, so is, is there a child in the, in the, I mean, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't, you know, seen it, and please, you know, spare yourself from actually seeing it, but, like, the case at the end, and it's like, is there a, I, I, I thought it might have been, like, a child or... I was hoping of, it would have been Ripley or something. Some, Anna, sorry, some, yeah. some, something else <laughs> like, like that. I, oh, my God. Like, what in the holy name of Iron Man is this nonsense? <laughs> I do, right? I do. I was like, okay, no, I, I can't. And, and it really sucked yeah. because, you know, you would, you know, like, if you go on, on TNT or one of those other stations, they will, especially during this month, they will bring for you the original Predator. Yes. And just the idea of where it has strayed is one of those is like, I, I can't even. So that for me is my, uh, my, yeah, that that that's my that's my dishonorable. That's my dishonorable. Nice, nice, nice. Well, yeah. well, very, very good pick there. I mean, we've, we've yeah. pretty much suffered through <laughs> these movies, so. <laughs> except for the first one. I mean, the first one. Yeah, uh, anything after that one. Was, I will defend one was Predators. Kind yeah. of good to I will defend Predators. I think Predators, the direct uh, Robert Rodriguez movie. I think yeah. it's an excellent Predator film. Yeah, I, well, I, I just said that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's up there. It's up there. Not as yeah. good. As the original one, of course, no, it's but not. it's not. But I, I have it like honestly, I like it more than Predator Two. Yeah, Predator yeah. Two is so incredibly. I just beautiful. can't buy uh, Danny Glover. I'm sorry, he seems so sweaty <laughs> and so exhausted during that entire thing. I, I can't I know, buy right? him surviving one encounter with that thing, far less climbing less. down the side of a building and chasing yeah. after me. I, I can't. I really can't. <laughs> pre right. or, or 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 post um lethal 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 weapon in terms yeah, of when it, it came it's out it's post lethal weapon too so he still had like year that, after yeah. lethal weapon too yeah okay yeah that explains the kind yeah. of yeah <laughs> all right so just just keep it with the with the bad once again um let's now get to our picks for our individual picks sorry for the worst horror film franchise ever 
So, Alice, if you don't mind, um, what yeah. is your pick for worst horror movie franchise ever? Uh, paranormal Activity. <laughs> well done. Well true. Well true. Uh, before, I start, before I start, I only saw the first one and the mm-hmm. last one. I don't think I saw the second one because around that time I was like, okay, but this is literally the same show, like repeat, and the first show, mm-hmm. he put me yeah. to sleep, honestly, and it just had a few moments I made my jump. I was like, ah, oh, but other than that, I was bored. <laughs> and then yeah. the last one came out and it's called oh, yeah. Ghost Dimension, and then yeah. that ending hit, and it felt like a slap to my face, and I was yeah. done. Alice, Alice knows that I call this thing waiting for activity. I, I yep. wow. it's so right. Take one. Take one. Something it's like happens in these movies. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, so why why did you choose paranormal activity? Well, here, here's the thing, Matt. I um I've always been. I don't know why. I've always been very curious about the paranormal. So I have been following a lot of paranormal shows i always follow a lot of paranormal shows you know ghost hunters ghost adventures and so on so i don't know if i've become desensitized or what but it was literally like waiting for activity i wasn't even impressed with the first one apart from a couple scenes well spoiler here like where they put the um the body baby powder on the floor and you saw the demonic footprints walking through it Mm -hmm. and like when Katie was dragged out of the bed by one foot, kind of thing. Yes, it kind yes. Of, yeah. that, that was that was a memorable moment. I give yeah. them that. It, it kind of goes in with the phobia that most people have of, um, there's a phobia where you can't sleep with, with your legs exposed or, or your leg off yeah. the bed. I have yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> right. I have to be covered up. So a lot of people that have that phobia were like, oh my <laughs> goodness, I am definitely not sleeping uncovered for the rest of my life, kind of thing. Right. <laughs> But apart from that, it was like pretty much meh for me because there wasn't much of anything going on in it. But there was the storyline that was continuing, which got you interested to watch the second one to see where this was going. Because it kind of follows the the same family, Katie and um, Christy. Even going into, um, yes, even going into part two. It kind of follows more the sister, Christy, and her child being um, some kind of chosen something or the other, you know? And even then, the, the plot is so patchy and, and stuff doesn't happen. You literally fall asleep during the movie waiting for stuff to happen. Mm. Right? On, the only thing that maybe shocks you is like the ending, ending scene where Katie kills the sister and takes the, the nephew because he's the chosen one. So we don't know, the audience doesn't know what it is yet. Right. And and the only other reveal is that maybe they might have been part of some spooky cult and that was it. Nothing else but just empty filler, watching these people goof around with the camera and that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. not much of anything. Right, and right. Part three kind of goes into the backstory of Katie and Christy. Um, they always, the first two parts did mention something that happened to them as kids where they don't like to talk about. And um, basically, it's always said that their house um, burnt down in a fire and they didn't have pictures or records or anything from the past and so on. So this kind of shows you the lead up to that. It shows you Katie um, and Christy um, with their mother. And I think it's not even their real father. They don't even show you who their real father is. The mother just has, like, a living boyfriend. And the grandmother is a very domineering kind of figure in um, their lives. She, right. she um, It looks like they are the ones that have the wealth in the family. So the grandmother is always telling um, the, the kid's mother that she doesn't think that he's the right one and you know using want to marry into the money and so on and so forth um by the by the end of it again waiting for activity to happen nothing happens just a few camera tricks mm. angles and all that stuff again last five minutes of the movie then something happens again you see the 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 grandmother takes the um the two girls kills the parents and this is a more reveal into the witch cult. Now it's a real, it's a witch cult. 
and they, they are taken in to train and they have prophecy of the future and they talk about um Christy having the 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 son that will you know that will be the one to to carry on the cult or whatever it is it's it's very for the most part it's very boring and and the the plot is is very shoddy yeah yeah um, it's, it's just all reliant on the mm-hmm. jump scare that that's what i've noticed with these um, with yeah. those films yeah that's all it is anything about it is if you're desensitized to these things they only do one thing all the time like Okay, a chandelier falls. Um, all the objects in the kitchen clatter to the floor. A chair moves. The light flicks on at a weird time. Okay, the dog barks at an empty corner in the room. They they are just typical. Um, the usual. Yeah, they're just typical tropes. There's nothing different there. There's nothing interesting there. And and another thing I should mention too is that I am not a big fan of found footage horror because same quite thing here. Yeah, yeah, same. Quite frankly, it gives me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The only yeah. series that I think ever pulled it off well is the Rex series. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, they, indeed, they, yeah. they did it, you know, because the thing about found footage for me is like, okay, if it's not within the realm of reality, like, why would somebody carry around a camera and tape everything while they're being chased? Uh, you have to have a logical reason for that. Rex mm-hmm. killed it because she's a reporter and they have to tape what's happening. Right. Um, another one, I, I just had it in my head. Well, of course, we know Blair Witch. We know what that one was about. That one, That's a movie that triggered the entire thing. Cloverfield, it made sense, you know, but... Yeah. Uh, I kind of like uh, Raven Counters, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what again they went in there. They were ghost hunters, so it yeah. makes sense. But so many films after that just uh, figured, okay, this is a cheap way to make a film. Yeah, and let's jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, and and some guy would always say, well, why are you taping this? And the response would be, well, people need to know what happened. It's like, no, I'm running oh. for my life. I am not holding up my iPhone while I'm running for my life yeah. trying to get exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And if you see the size of the camera that they use in the Paranormal Activity movies, this thing is huge. Yeah. They they comment on it every time. They've never, they've never seen a camera so huge because if you look at the cameras that the YouTubers use, they're, they're tiny. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's, it, what Summer says is true. It's very unrealistic that you have a demon running it on through the house. You're scared out of your mind, but you're gonna take the time to this fill. big camp quarter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it wait, makes wait, no wait, sense. Wait, wait, wait. I need to make sure the battery charge. Okay. Okay, go. Yeah. <laughs> <Not for your> life. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, they're telling the demon, hold on one second. Oh like out of the shit. Yeah, out you, of can you do that again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just rattle the windows one more time. <laughs> yeah. It's like and the and the thing is the only thing I give that franchise is that they try to continue the the storyline, but the storyline is, is again it, it's not cohesive enough. It's not interesting enough mm. because, like part four is, is not is a different family, but again the same characters come into play where um Katie was missing. They they put these um these one liners at the end of the movie, like the last the ending credit where Katie disappeared and Hunter disappeared, which is the nephew, and they have not been seen by the police since. So so to kind of make it almost oh, look they, like, they oh, it's a true story. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so part four, kind of like, it starts off with a different family. So you have a little bit of um, hope that, okay, maybe they're there, they're with the storyline and they want to do something new. But no, the characters show back up again as creepy neighbors. And they decimate this entire family, which I, up to now, I still don't know the reason for why the family was murdered. They just try to do a kind thing, and this entire family gets killed for no, for no reason whatsoever. So again, paranormal activity, nothing. <laughs> the, the part five is the only one that, um, and I think Summer would agree with me here, mm. where it was, it was different. They, they really tried to, to genuinely do something different, and it was quite entertaining. Um, this was the one with um, in the Latino, that took place in the Latino community. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, you know, they, they have a lot of, the Latinos believe in a lot of superstitions and bruja. Yeah. 
and stuff like that. So they had a neighbor that they used to call Bruja. And, um, you know, typical kids, you know, after graduation, bored and just playing the fool. So they end up, I don't, I don't know if this is humanly possible, but he gets this, um, this camera for like a graduation present. And um, he, he's, he is able to somehow film his neighbor, who is the Bruja, doing some kind of weird um, ceremony on a, on a young woman. It's put in some kind of symbol. Um, it looks like a circle in a triangle on her stomach. And um, oh, wow, yeah. So they see that they they get a little freaked out, whatever. But he has the footage, and then one of his his friends um, from school, they um, it looks like he he jumps off a roof and kills himself. I think the friend's name was Hector or something like that. So um, they all reel in and so on and um they started to want to do investigations because the guy was their good friend in school and they had no he had no reason to do that so curiosity kill the cat and they break into this buha's apartment and they find this book where is it looks like a normal notebook where um like leaflets um from from some kind of um spell book or something have been stuck in and the Bruja was like writing her own notes at the side. And it spoke a lot about opening doorways and, and, and gateways and, and so on. Stuff that, you know, no normal human being should be messing with. So, so this is where that movie actually has a strong point in terms of it speaks about something else other than the cult. It was speaking right. about doorways and dimensions and so on. But again... I don't want to waste my time looking at some silly teenagers that should know better than to be messing around with that stuff. Because again, if you grow up in a Latino community and your parents and grandparents warning you about these things, you're not going to want to go around and mess with them. So right. yeah, you should know better kind of vibe. Yeah, you yeah. should know better. Yeah. And this is where the movie veers off for me because they actually went and painted Amara black to try and do this, this ceremony to open the gateway. I'm like, one of your good friends just killed themselves from messing around with this stuff. Why are you going to do this? Why? It doesn't make sense. You know? And then after they do this, this ceremony now, the, um, the lead character, Jesse, starts to, to get these supernatural powers. So he's like defying gravity and um, they, um, they, they get almost mugged coming home one night from exercising. And when one of the, um, the gangsters tries to, to grab him to, to beat him up, he actually gets pushed away very violently by invisible force. So the basically the thing is that he has become possessed by something from whatever they were messing around with and it's protecting him. But like normal airhead teenagers, they're like, oh, he has <laughs> yeah, superpowers yeah. now. He could fly, he could do this, you know. <laughs> so it's like, oh my goodness, really, really. So, what, one sec, so is it? Is it that the film is trying to be like chronicle in a sense? I know, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at me and my powers, and now they're gonna corrupt me because movie. Yeah, <laughs> give me that kind of vibe, though. Yeah, yeah. I really don't know where they were going with it because it it, it did start off solid. It really did start off solid, and then when they started messing around, I'm like, at this point, guys, I can't feel sorry for you because you went messing around with stuff that you shouldn't. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. So, but again, it was one of the more enjoyable ones out of the franchise until, you know, that fell. And even the way it ended was just ridiculous. Because again, it, they brought back the Katie Christie thing where at one point where it's like the last part of the film. And you see the, the kids, you see Katie and Christy as children, their, their faces with their eyes all blacked out and stuff. And they bring back mm. the cult, the witch cult, and all that <laughs> stuff. Exactly. So they still kept the storyline. The one that you saw, Matt, the, um, the last one, Ghost Dimension. Um, that one, again. <laughs> the this, the this end of camera. that movie. The end. That yes. end. Well, well I, I'm not going to see it. So tell me, what is the end of that movie? Well, the um, basically... Everybody dies the same stupid. <laughs> Everybody dies again. 
<laughs> and then the trading okay. which comes. That should so, be the tagline for this. Every, yeah, just, everybody, every, 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 everybody dies. Every, everybody dies. <laughs> and Katie and Christy shows back up again to say hi to the fans. So in Ghost Dimension now, the stupid big camera comes back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they go in Come on, the really? Room. Yeah. They go a little and, and it's in our timeline. Because um if I'm not mistaken, I think that was twenty eighteen as well too. When that movie came out. Oh so this, I, this I, I think it was a little I, I'm probably wrong, but I think it's like a couple of years earlier. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I have to check it again. I didn't write down the year, but it's like okay, it's in our timeline. We like I told you, we have neat little cameras now. They they're putting up this one takes place around Christmas. There's always a little a little kid around, so there's the family has a little girl, and as usually, kids start off nice and happy and sweet and untouched, right? Until they find the same stupid big camera in one of the boxes when they're decorating for Christmas. And um, they, they start messing around with it, right? Because, again, curiosity killed the cat. So they find this camera in a box with a bunch of tapes. And it looks as though the, um, the, the child's father is in, like, media or advertising or something because in his office he has like a bunch of tvs and equipment so and he knows how to manipulate the camera and then you saw that he opened the side panel of the camera and he was saying that there's there's nothing this camera doesn't match anything this was custom built because it had six picture tubes instead of three and um the zoom had some kind of weird um some kind of weird addition to it that um, he said he don't know what his purpose was. So he was just like so caught up in this camera because he'd never seen anything like it before. He, he could have Googled it. I don't well, know what was wrong with it. Well, he Googled it. That's how he knew that this thing had six picture tubes and no other camera had six picture tubes in it. No um, other camera, as, just his camera. <laughs> just that one that he found. That's that's your little eBay. Sorry, his eBay cap code. Yeah, he specializes. Yeah, but I I just checked the date, guys. It was twenty fifteen, and Sinister yeah. came out before this. Sir. So this premise is sounding very um very similar yeah. to Sinister in that yeah. in that respect. Yeah, like I told you, they they basically run out of ideas at this time. So basically he starts he switch on, he switches on said camera that is like over 20 years old and oh it's working i don't know about any camera that's over 20 years old that's working when you switch it off when you switch it on after but this one apparently is because of some super camera yeah some super camera when he switches it on wow everything looks a bit weird but this film was done for in 3d this was yes I remember, I remember that being a gimmick Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. So when he switches on the camera, the, the, in certain places when the camera moves, you could see like uh, I think that was probably meant to be 3D. I didn't get the the 3D experience because I just watched it on on um online. But you see, like there's the around certain images, it, it kind of has this blue greenish kind of weird aura, and and mm-hmm. then at one point when he turns the camera in the living room, you see um like kind of like this black stuff that's been disintegrated but it's been floating in the air but it's not a shape so i'll give it one thing that special effect was kind of cool and in terms of like only the camera only the camera was able to see it you with your naked eye couldn't see it but what they were trying to say is that the camera was so special it was built that way in order to tap into the ghost dimension which is what was being represented there that is what they were saying. Right. Like I said, the little girl starts off nice and sweet, and then said demon wants little child. As we've seen before, demons love the little children for some reason. Pedophile. So she starts. <laughs> yeah, pedophile goes. <laughs> <laughs> so she she starts to get very um, how you say? Very um closed off and she starts to give the parents attitude and, and she starts to play with an imaginary friend and we all know how that oh goes. Oh boy, yeah. Because mm-hmm. you know the imaginary friend usually turns out to be a um, said demon. Yep. Who wants to um, have a, a human a body. Or something. Yeah. Yes, who wants to have a human body. And apparently it delves more into the storyline with um, 
Katie's nephew, Hunter, and this child, this little girl, were apparently born the same date, same month, same year. Which, when the, when the priest um, broke it down, was 666. Which, as we know, is the mm-hmm. double yeah, snap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, apparently, they needed the blood of these two children in order to create a body for this particular demon. Who has the lamest name ever, Toby. <laughs> or, I don't know. Yeah, Toby the demon. Oh, wow. Toby? When I yeah. thought Pazuzu was the worst, Pazuzu, his yeah. type has been stolen. <laughs> oh my god, Toby. Is... Oh, like, Did you work so in the West Wing or something? That's, that's not the only Toby. <laughs> I don't Run, know. it's Toby. <laughs> you know, so it's like the name is laughable because it literally sounds like an imaginary friend. But the end of the movie goes and you don't ever hear like a menacing name like like how, okay, in... in the Conjuring fr- franchise, at least Valak sounds menacing. Yeah, that yeah. sounds badass. That's metal. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but Toby, really? So, and then, and then the, the opening goes dimension where um, you just see like this porthole opens in the child's bedroom and she travels back and forth. And they, they prove somehow that it's um different timelines. You, you know, every time they, they start to interfere with different timelines and dimension, it's get it gets very sketchy. Because then you could either go the right way or the wrong way with these things. And they were jumping back and forth with timelines and it it was kind of confusing and, and a bit ridiculous after a while. And then too, there were certain scenes where okay. Tell me, if you know a demon is after your child, right? And you got cameras because you, you want to film and you want to have um, proof and, and so on. So you have a camera that's on constantly on the child 24-7. Why would you encourage your wife who was sleeping on, on the ground there by the child bed to leave the bedroom and come and sleep? Because we need some paranormal activity. What's wrong with you? Yeah. In the name of the movie. Like, it was so silly. Uh, guys, I was like, oh my God. That sounds... It's like, that sounds okay. like an episode of Fringe. <laughs> Screw the baby. Yeah. We could get. We need some paranormal activity. We need some footage for YouTube. It's like, it's like okay, you know this thing happening. You know that the child is saying that he's coming to get me. He's coming soon, and and so on. You know that's the same night that the dimension opens up and the child walks through it and disappears for like a few hours and they're running all over the house looking for this child. And I'm like, why did you leave your child, your mother, you know, mother's mama be a protective mood? Mm. And you let your husband encourage you to leave the room. I'm like, really? Seriously? No, no, no. <laughs> and then, um, like I said, nobody really survives these movies other than the children. So m- most of the, all the adults bite it eventually because the demon, they try to bring in a priest. And that, that special effect was cool because um, usually in these things when you're trying to exorcise a demon, the electricity always cuts off for some reason. Yeah. So the, um, the camera has a night vision lens, which we knew from the other parts. So it didn't surprise me that they brought that back. So while the exorcism is going on, the night vision is going. And you get at least one cool shot of the the demon being exorcised just before the poor priest gets killed. And um, they trap him in a in a circle where they say is, uh, he can't come out of that circle. They kind of like bound him and they were soaking the sheets in um, a bathtub of holy water because the priest blessed this water and said soak the sheets because when the demon is trapped in this circle, they want to throw the, the sheets soaked in ho- holy water on him and then banish him back to the pits of hell, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is a super demon or what, because they did what the priest told them, and the demon still escaped and jumps into oh, one of the apples, and then and then starts killing them off one by one, and eventually um the portal opens up again, and the child goes through it even with her mother calling her because she's like gone at this time, and um the mother walks through the the portal as well too, and she ends up in a timeline of where Katie and Christy were children and they were with the grandmother in this house living with this witch cult. And they, they and they're trying to do this um the, the ceremony, right? Because the little girl disappears. Right. And 
I don't know, in all this, she remembers to pick up the camera and walks into the other dimension <laughs> with the camera, by the way. So all this is being filmed with said camera. Oh, that's hilarious. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely dumbfounding because I'm like, yeah, your child just walked through into another dimension, defying all the laws of science, and you still have time to pick up this stupid camera. So she walks through that, the that, camera. That's for the audience to see. The audience needs to see what the, <laughs> the camera pick it up. I'm like, geez. And then um, she goes into the house and she sees a very creepy, I think it's Katie, down at the end of a hallway telling her that she's too late. And mm-hmm. she's just going around the place calling for her daughter, calling for her daughter. Nothing. And then she starts to see um, blood dripping from the from the ceiling. A little bit. Not like over amount, like gory amount. Just like a little bit. So she's like, what's going on? What's going on? And then eventually when the camera pans, she sees the daughter there telling her, oh, well, it's it's finished, mommy. They only needed some blood to um to give him a body. Right. So meaning Toby, to give Toby a, a body. So she's still there with this camera saying, well, they need to, to get out and, and so on and panicking and all that. So e- eventually, um, like all women that start to scramble and, and fall into everything and, and, you know, and then eventually she throws down the camera. So we see the camera lying on its side, but still filming her, but she's in the darkness now. So she can't see. And then... Toby, apparently now with a whole body, you can see it's like, you just see a man's legs, right? Comes right. from from some god alone nowhere and um, holds the mother up, you know, snaps her neck, pelts her away, and the child has no reaction. She just um, holds out her hand and says, Toby, and then she holds Toby, the demon's hand, and they walk away into the darkness. Happily ever after. And then the camera it looks as though it gets though. um yeah the camera <laughs> looks as though it gets slapped away and that is the end and I'm like and that's the ending that I hate just this that moment with the camera being slapped away yeah because it's like what what did I just look at oh my goodness you, know, you can see why this is my worst pick because why and and they had so many of these movies and guess what they're panning apart seven. That's supposed to be released next year. But, but, so but I, why do? Why? Like, why? Yeah, that, that is exactly my point. Why? Why put us through this torture? Who are the brain dead people out there that keep supporting this kind of movie? What makes you what makes you enjoy this type of movie? There's nothing happening. And even the little plot, the little subplots that they keep trying to bring forward with this witch cult, the they messed up the entire storyline because they went on to this time travel thing with this dimension, jumping back and forth, yeah. and it makes no sense. <laughs> it's just, I'm just like, oh no. And I had to watch it all because I had to kind of like prepare for this podcast. Right. So oh, you really watch all of them? Oh. Yeah. Aww. So I put myself, <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah, that I give you a we, 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 we feel your pain. We really do. No, no, no BS. Yeah. We really, really do feel Yeah. yeah. My husband was watching me like, what are you looking at? They say you want to fall asleep on yourself. What are you looking at? I said, it's supposed to be a horror movie. He's like, really? But I don't see anything. I said, my point exactly. All we could see is that the pain is over now. Mm-hmm. You can move on. You can live your life. You can right? breathe. Oh, thank God, yes. You can breathe. Because yeah. I'm never watching those ever again. <gasps> <laughs> so, Samali, what is your pick for worst horror movie franchise? Well, very quickly, I say I had two, but one won out over the other, just for <laughs> having sh- the sheer numbers. Um, my my runner-up was Jaws, <laughs> because <laughs> the yeah. only good Jaws movie is the first Jaws yeah, the first movie. One. It, it, that's, yeah. just, that's just a fact. But e- Even the fourth <laughs> one, which is like notoriously like bad and laughable, is, is that still really one? bad. Yeah. Jaws 3D. No, no, but no. 3D it came after that one. one, right? That's okay, what yeah. everybody oh, yeah. was on that 3D kick. Right. And uh, whether it worked or not, and it really didn't work. But Jaws 4 is so weird because it's like Jaws is seeking revenge. But it's not the same shark. So we're supposed to believe that this shark is like the Charles Bronson of the sea. 
and he's like seeking out the family that killed his mother or whatever yeah. the hell it is. It's yeah, just like so literally stupid. following the family, yeah. yeah. Like they yeah. You move from yeah. one place, jump on a plane, go to the next Thank place, you. and the shark is following this, them. Huh? This shark has a private de- detective shark that works. <laughs> In, you know, that works for him, and, and he somehow <laughs> finds them in the Caribbean, I think. It's just stupid. But oh, well done, okay. The film that, the franchise that really won this title by a landslide would be Leprechaun for me. Ah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right? Um, I've, I've only suffered through um, the first two, no? The first two and Leprechaun in the hood. I, I can't remember if that was, no, that's not the fourth one. Yeah. I don't well, know if that's the fifth or, or sixth. So they're two in the hood smart and um really it, it was so nice they had to do it twice and this is me holding up the sarcasm sign in the background but <laughs> there are eight of these movies and i've seen them all <laughs> right so for you i give props to the first film it was a stupid silly premise but it was something we hadn't seen at the time you know and the idea yeah. of this cute little leprechaun that we associate leprechauns with being, you know, funny and and mm-hmm. and just, you know, all things Irish. But to see one as a villain, I mean, it was interesting. And Warwick Davis really sells the part. He really does, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, he does, he does. Yeah. And I mean, um, Jennifer Aniston, right? I mean... Yeah, yeah, I think this is her yeah. film debut. Granted, she hated it. So she hated the fact that she was in this so much. She tried to have her name removed from this movie. Oh, and, wow. and when she hits it big on Friends, they reboxed it and put her face... Big in the middle, starring John <laughs> Jennifer. Oh my it. goodness. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, right? no. so, you know, this the second one, for whatever reason, he's looking for a bride. Guys, I'm not gonna go into the details on these things other than to say it's so bad. The acting is bad. The premise is ridiculous. I get going after the gold. But somehow, some they come up with some background where he needs a bride to get more power. So it's yeah. just stupid. Um, the third oh, one. Power. I thought you just wanted a, a bride just because movie, right? Yeah, it, 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 it was some prophecy or something like that. I, I didn't go do it, Alicia. Did. Oh, I love Alicia. when they bring prophecies. <laughs> I did not rewatch any of these, but they're in my memories. So. <laughs> it's third one i actually kind of dig the third one because the third one is set in las vegas and i thought it was the perfect setting for a character that's based on greed you know so it actually actually works pretty well there's some fun effects in there some cool kills you know Mm -hmm. um but like i think there's one where he there's somebody who's like vomiting up uh coins like a slot machine it's just it's ridiculous but it's fun Mm-hmm. And and then they didn't wait very long to take our boy into space, which happens in part Ah, yes. Four. The, the infamous Leprechaun 4 in space. Yes. yes. And Best title ever. Guys, Leprechaun this one why? is why? so bad. And it's so ridiculous <laughs> that they wanted to get on the whole alien thing because there's actually a space marine in this who is, he's killed and reborn with like the spirit of the leprechaun so it's like a mm-hmm. like uh the leprechaun is killed and he goes into this guy like an alien like that like, oh, like, you know, like john hood's character in the first one in yes. the first alien movie, you know yeah. and there's a mad scientist <laughs> really, who really. turns into a monster and oh it's my. just there are space marines it's it's like everything it's like alien on, on lsd it's just wrong on every level oh my goodness <laughs> Right. And, you know, I guess after space, where else can you take him that, you know, white people are not very familiar with? So they put him in the hood. Put him in the hood. All right. Somebody explain that. I want to me know. (laughs) All right. All right. So, so one second. So I remember two moments in it because I I actually watched this on cable. actually got up late in the night to ask my wife to watch it, right? I remember him having his first blunt and seeing a friend with weed is a friend indeed. Mm-hmm. I remember that. I remember Ice T being in the film for some reason. I forgot yeah. what his character was. Yeah. I remember at the very end of the movie, he drops a freestyle. Like he actually does a rap and the hook goes, what Lep the in the hood, hell? come to do no good. That yeah. was burnt into my 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 consciousness. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's very much black exploitation. It's so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing: people liked it a lot, you know, and they did it again in part five. Yeah, back to right? the hood. In, in, yeah. 
right? In part six. Oh, sorry. in part six, part six. Yes, part yeah. six, right? But here they took it way too seriously. It's it's gorier. It has uh, a lot more blood and, and uh, gory kills in this one. It's it's these kids who find the coins. And of course, you know, they want to use the, the coins to get out of the neighborhood, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And it, the leprechaun comes for his property. But this one, it just, it doesn't have that fun energy that the first in the hood movie had. So mm -hmm. it falls flat on its face because it takes itself, a leprechaun movie should never take itself seriously, you know, right. and, and this film makes that mistake. Actually, see, it's the last time that Warwick Davis stars as a leprechaun. Right, because in Seven, uh, they have this guy named Dylan Post, who is, he was a part of the WWE wrestling. He was known as a Horn character. Swoggle. Horn Swoggle. right. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. This is by far the worst leprechaun movie, in my opinion. Worse than the one in space, because, first of all, the leprechaun doesn't look like a leprechaun. He looks like an aborted fetus. I'm sorry. That's oh, the best way I can you. It's like it's supposed to be like a very <laughs> demonic looking form. You hardly ever see it, by the way. You get to see his POV because he like he sees people's heat signature and that I oh. don't know if, if he's supposed oh, to be well. predator. I don't know what <laughs> it is. <laughs> right? And again, if this wow. one is these kids um on a trip um to visit some area, I think it's supposed to be I can't remember if it's supposed to be somewhere in Ireland. And the people there basically feed people, strangers, to the leprechaun so that it won't come after them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's stupid. It's very bad. It's just nothing memorable about this. It's mm -hmm. like a mashup of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, and Predator, and it doesn't work at all. Hmm. And then... Mm -hmm. well, the, one thing, though, Summer... Yes. Um, it's origins though. Remember that in the title, Leprechaun Origins. So yeah. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was like the backstory, which of course everyone needed, right? It's, <laughs> of, it's, you it's know, really the not. It doesn't come across at all like a backstory, unless you want to say, like, um, for instance, Wishmaster. That's right. a series that's pretty interesting because it takes the whole genie thing and it goes to the roots of what a genie is, which is a jinn. And in Middle Eastern folklore, the jinn are not good characters they're not gonna oh. come out of a lamp and and sing you a diddy a la robin williams they're actually they're, very deceitful they're very deceitful they're very cunning and they mm -hmm. try to twist your wishes against you mm -hmm. so that's what made wishmaster kind of fun um actually here, i like that series yeah, yeah here it's I really not should, i really should check this out yeah here what mm -hmm. happens is that, that it's supposed to be i guess the raw form of what a leprechaun is and it right. just doesn't work at all and then we end things actually on a bit of a high note. Leprechaun 8, a.k.a. Leprechaun oh Return. Eight. Eight. Yes, there's I know, eight, right? I didn't even right? know there was an 8. <laughs> now, Came out in 2018. Yeah. And wow. we have a new actor playing the Leprechaun, Lyndon Poco. And I have to say he does a wonderful job because he is very much bringing back the spirit of what Warwick Davis does. Mm -hmm. but, but he makes the character his own thing because his character is definitely... Um, the Warwick Davis character could be very foolish and idiotic in the way he portrayed the character sometimes. Yes, you know, this character has a very devilish streak to him. He's very cunning. And yeah. the movie itself is also embracing the first Leprechaun film because the girl in this is actually Jennifer Aniston's character. She's supposed to be her mother. Right, and she went insane. Oh, really? okay. Yeah, she went insane, and this girl is um on a college trip kind of thing where they're supposed to take this old house and make the entire house um uh, environmentally friendly. So it's her and a group of kids that they're putting in solar panels, they're doing all that stuff, and um the leprechaun. I think I'm trying to remember what caused it to come back because he did die. They did um kind of trap him in the well in the first film. And this continues from that. He's released from that well. So it's almost like they're saying everything in between never happened. You know, with this film. Brilliant. And, <laughs> yeah. So the kills are very modern. Like he kills somebody with a drone. Um, there's this cool, <laughs> very memorable kill where one of the solar panels comes down and slices someone in half. It's It looks really cool. Um, the characters here, the, the actors, uh, they're, they're not bad, you know, the, the lead character, she's very likable. And like I said, the Lyndon Porco as the le leprechaun, he, he was a solid replacement for Warwick Davis. So, um, it, 
it I would rate it as as be, even better than the first one. And I think if they could keep that energy going, they might have something, you know, that they could revive here. But overall, this is a terrible franchise as horror movies go. It, it's really <laughs> bottom of the barrel for me. Yeah, I hear you. All right, uh, Tracy, your pick for worst horror horror movie franchise of all time. Yes, the worst horror movie franchise of all time. Uh, <laughs> coming up next on VH1. Um, I so I have, I have, I have two. If I'm being really honest, I have two that I kind of battle between uh, because for both of them. And again, this is a, this is this is where I fall in. Okay, before I even go there, um, I just want to give real kudos to you guys because I mean to go back and sit down and see seven and eight in a in a in a in any franchise, far less a horror movie franchise. Like I laugh about Fast and Furious, and I still know I'm going to sit down and probably watch nine, far yes. less something that is like horror, um, or far more something like horror. So kudos. Um, for me, in terms of the very worst, I have two that I I bounce around between. One is uh, Anaconda two and f- two to four. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I completely forgot Anaconda had that many movies. <laughs> Anaconda two to four. See you here. See you here. Because like like Anaconda one was the the thing that I like about about, about Anaconda one was how bad the Anaconda looked. <laughs> It's, it's, it, it, well, yeah, that, 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 that's a whole height unto itself. But you know, that was like what? And, and, and before I forget, um, John Voight's scene chewing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, scenery chewing uh, performance in that. That's before we found out that he, you know, wasn't a, a monster in real life as well, um, because yeah. of, his, of his choices. But there an icy thing because there you have you, you're following the snake, you're following the serpent, but you're also dealing with. The human monsters um, and the, the 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 choices that they've made, um, the choices that he makes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and Jennifer Lopez was in there, and I was very much loving Jennifer Lopez. I was like, yes, please. Um, <laughs> and Ice Cube, oh boy, Ice Cube. Was <laughs> that. But then two to four. Well, happened. but respect to Ice Cube. Uh, respect to Ice Cube. I mean, you know, the, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, you know, when when he's when he's doing a thing, he's doing a thing. Um, and then two to four happened, and I, I I I don't really have much of a memory of four, but the hunt for the blood orchid. I I actually like I, that I one. That it's a bit of a guilt. Yeah. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure for me. I, I know it's crap. I really do. But <laughs> that's why I avoided it because it was bad. Yeah, yeah. but um, it's more. But it's more like a a chick thing because the the, the lead hero is quite sexy. So. It's, what, what? Right. Johnny Johnny Messner, the the guy who um he's kind of like one of the boat people. I was right. him and an Asian right. guy, yeah. yeah. So you yeah, know yeah. that my reasons for liking that is it's quite um. <laughs> so, so 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 it's on it's on our surface. It's on our surface. Yeah, I, I can understand. Surface level thing, yeah. I can understand, but I I I feel like after after one. There was it, it's it's the same shock needle before shock needle started happening and getting ridiculous in terms of it's the it's 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 the nest the nest of anacondas and you know you have to go and hunt this thing down and all this and it's like no I don't I don't need it in my life one was enough so there's that and then there's species which species one Whoa. for me was, <laughs> <laughs> species one I know. Okay. True back. <laughs> Species one as uh, uh, Ben Kinsley was in that, and um, yeah. oh god, Doc Ock, uh, Alfred Molina uh, was in yeah. that. Uh, what was, what was the, 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 the actress? Um, Natasha. Natasha Hem Hens Henstridge. 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 Yeah. I remember when that movie came out in '95 and how big a deal is. Yeah. Ooh, sexy alien. Sexy the killer alien. alien. Yeah. And, 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 the and then species two it... happened. I was like, no, 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 but, no, no. But no, here's, no, here's no. the hands. Like okay, so the the first two because there's there's four, so the first two has Natasha. Um, the, the 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 last two um was on Sci-Fi, so oh, okay, direct the video. And then they I, made I, I, a, yeah, and then they made a, they made a, a, a DVD kind of randomness, but they, they they premiered it on Sci-Fi with good reason. So you start off with Sill, and then you know by the time uh uh the second one comes in, 
her name now is Eve because you know any first woman contact mm, type yes. something you know mm. let's just go straight to Eve um, and so Eve destroys and wrecks everything you know because Eve and then um, three and four like I said those are sci-fis the fourth one um, the fourth one has like the a, a new actress who forgive me but blonde slim um, yeah, Caucasian she's a, woman she, um, she's kind of big she kind of hit it off for a while um, I'm trying to remember no I'm, you know what I'm mixing her up with Laura Vandervoot because mm. they kind of look similar uh, her name is Helena Matz and I don't know her but mm. she kind of always reminds me of Laura Vandervoot uh, small bills that's, that's that's legitimately where I remember her from, and then I will go to like V or something like that. But yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So so those those the last two then becomes a, a sci-fi thing, and the last one is called um, Species Awakening, and she's <laughs> she's a human. This particular species is a is a human because you know they have to make a clone of Syl slash Eve. So she's a human, and then some sort of accident happens, and then she def- her 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 people starts explaining to her, well, you know, you're actually an alien human thingy, my bob, and she doesn't want <laughs> to be alien, and and it, oh, so those two species, two to 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 four, and and a condo, two to two four, of uh, like no, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my own, I'm going to keep it, I'm actually going to keep it short and sweet. Reason being is that um, I saw these movies once. Well, sorry, I saw two of them once. The first two once. Sorry, more than once. Oops. Saw the others, I should say. Yeah, saw the others once. And I, I remember little to nothing about, you know, the plots and whatnot, right? But I remember how little I enjoyed them. My pick for, for the worst... <laughs> Horror film okay. franchise goes to, and I know this is an easy pick. I know I, I just I just go in for the small fry. I know, but trust me when I say this deserves to be on my list. Resident Evil. Oh, oh boy! boy. Oh. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. yeah. Boy, oh, boy. I, I, I'd, I'd go with that one. I'd go with that one. <laughs> and here's the thing: I will confess something. I have not played Resident Evil games. It's not like me I was either. never interested. It's just time and lack of a proper, Matt? you know. Matt, uh, one, one barely has anything to do with the other. Trust me. I've played the I, game. I know, one barely has anything to do with the other. I, I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but here's the thing. I, at least, okay, so I, because I didn't have the, 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 the right console to play it, right? Because I wasn't on the Resident Evil 2, you know, hype train and all that kind of stuff, right? I, I told myself, at least with these films, okay, so they're not sticking to the source material. All right, I get that with the first one. Okay. But at least at some point in time, the films will get good enough that I could actually one day say, all right, let me actually play the game and see, you know, kind of contrast mm-hmm. and compare, right? First one came out in 2002, you know, Paul W.S. Anderson, you know, in not a stranger to the, you know, um, to, to video game movies. You know, he, he made um, Mortal Kombat, which mm-hmm. still arguably is the best video game movie ever. That's not really saying much, sure, unfortunately, sure. but you know, he did this one. thing, right? One. One, yeah, yeah. yeah the, first one, one. One, the first one, the first one, right? Yeah. And, you know, at the time when I saw it, 2002, I saw it on cable. I remember it being on Cinemax slash HBO. I was like, all right, this this works as a really, you know, grimy, um, well, it's kind of grimy, um, schlocky, I should say, you know, sci-fi horror hybrid thing, right? I mean, uh, Jojo Fitch uh, was, the, was the lead, you know what I mean? Um, and everybody was like, oh, okay, can she play this character, Alice? And, you know, she played well, you know what I mean? She, she did her thing. Michelle Rodriguez was there too. She did she thing. She got killed, unfortunately. They had a cool thing with the, you know, the um, the grid, you know what I mean, with all these um, beams and, you know, yeah. just all this evolving and slicing people up and dicing them. That was really cool. You know, the mm-hmm. dogs and, you know, the, the liquors, whatever you call those things. So, you know, it was fine, right? And they had the nice little, um, you know, um, end scene where they realized, oh, you know what I mean, there's this bigger thing that's going on and not just in this underground chamber thing called the hive, right? And then Apocalypse came, right? I know for, for, for some, for most um, Resident Evil fans, this is where they felt the franchise fell off, right? For me, it's a dumb, guilty pleasure movie of mine. I, I dug how it just was more action-oriented. It's really, really dumb, eh? Really dumb. But I was like, okay, this is the kind of stuff I could watch on a Saturday night if I have nothing else to do. I know this kind of shut my brain off and watch it, right? Extinction Apocalypse out. also, sorry not to cut you off Apocalypse uh-huh. also has more stuff from the game in it Than the other films do huh? So, so strangely oh, okay. enough that people 
may um, not like it because it is there's a lot more game oriented stuff in that second one than in the first. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have Extinction, which I, I remember this was the first um, Resident Evil movie that I saw in theaters. Um, not the last one, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> and I really, really dug the the backdrop for the film, which was this post-apocalyptic desert version of Las Vegas. Like, that just mm. blew me away. I thought it was really cool, right? Yeah. And I went in, and I was kind of digging things, and... I, I, I let the, the, the zombie birds fly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's actually zombie birds in the show. Uh, I okay. don't know why, right? Yeah. Um, ravens <laughs> or whatever, whatever it is. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why they were there, but they were there, right? And <laughs> the show itself, like it was going good and then it just started to fall off and then it just ended and I was like, but the thing is because I went and expected this thing to be the end of the, front of the series now. Mm. But no, they, they, they had a stinger. There's a fourth film. So yes, the, the, the franchise kept going and we had Afterlife, which was the first Resident Evil, if I'm not mistaken, to be released in 3D, right? This was this came out in 2010. This was one of the worst shows I saw in 2010. I remember watching this in cinema and just not caring about anything at all, even when they brought in that... I, I, because I'm not familiar with the games, this big hulking guy with this big axe or hammer yeah. weapon thing. Swinging thing. Yeah, and it just didn't work for me. I, rem- I and- remember it being a little too polished for my liking. Like, um, the others have this kind of gritty, grimy, apocalyptic look to it that works, you know, for yeah. what yeah. it is. Um, I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but like, to me, Afterlife, Afterlife is the one where she discovers she's like a clone, right? Like, there's a lot of her. Like, there's a lot of Alex's yes. in that one, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. It was too polished. It was too shiny for what it was. Yeah. It was too cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had this soul stylized post Matrix. I remember Matrix ended in like what 2003. I was still <laughs> doing these slow motion shots and everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna get to that in a bit, right? Actually, I'm gonna get to it now because we had a <laughs> retribution <laughs> two years later. This has by far one of the most painfully unnecessary intros of any show I've ever seen in my life. Where it takes the events, I believe it's the yeah, the events near the end of the last movie, right? Which is set mm-hmm. on a ship. And basically mm-hmm. show everything in reverse. So you see in the opening titles and whatnot, and everything is being rewound right in front of our eyes. Wow. And I'm there like, why do? Why am I seeing everything move in super stylized slow-mo? None of this makes any sense. And then from there, it was just generic trying to escape zombies end up in one place this guy betrays you blah 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 and it just went nowhere and there's another stinger there's another film that comes up and that would be the final chapter and i was like yes hallelujah it's done yes and that in itself was just trying to be this mad max thing and it's even funny because this came out a year after mad max fury road right so you had the same sort of apocalyptic (laughs) alice on a bike Chase it down, being um, you know, being run down by zombies and you know, survivors of the apocalypse and oh try to do twist in the end and all these things. And by then, I was just like, just, just finish. But they say jump end. retribution, afterlife. Then it was retribution, and then no the retribution is re- retribution is the one that I see had the had the rewind thing. Oh yes, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I know what I talk about here. Yeah. Yeah, but by the time back to back with the other one, I'm at. Really? After life and yeah. Okay. Yeah, they will film back to back. Like oh, a lot of yeah, rings yeah. kind of vibes? Like <laughs> filmed it together kind of vibes? I, I don't know. It was just like um they got the contract to do two more Resident Evil movies. Uh-huh. And according to what I read in, he just like from the time he's finished filming the other one, they went right into filming the other one. Okay. Mm. But it's it still right. doesn't explain why they did that thing that um confused Ma- Matthew so much. <laughs> yeah. And and you really thought that would have been the end. They're just hearing about those two movies back to back. But nope. Yeah. Final chapter. They had to let me know that was it. That was the end. And I was so happy. I hated that movie um overall, right? And yeah, you know what I mean? So just two good shows, two two possible guilty pleasure movies. That would be the first two. And mm. then just five other just garbage fires. 
sorry, four <laughs> four garbage fires of of of, 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 of that that call itself Red, uh, Resident Evil. So yeah, mm. the, the the franchise fell off really really hard. It's uh, it more or less slap um, fans in the face the faces. Sorry, right. um, by then it was just. It just clearly was just this way for, for Paul W.S. Anderson and his wife, Mila, to just make money off of poor, you know, uh, cinema goers who just want to shut the brain off and just enjoy a film, you know what I mean? But nah, man, there's no excuse for this. And it's even worse now. End things here with Monster Hunter that's, that, that's supposed to be coming out by the end of the year in theaters. Ha, yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah. The trailer I, looks good, even though it doesn't, um, the story from what I could see, now I've never played Monster Hunter, but enemy. from what I could see in the trailer, the story is definitely being modernized. It's definitely, because it's, um, the game is just to me like it's a straightforward, this will exist, this will has monsters, you hunt the monsters, you get stuff from them, and you build better armor to hunt better monsters. So it's a basically a loot-based game, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think the backstory has anything to do with, like, the military getting sucked into, like, a parallel world or whatever that is. I, I don't think that right. exists in the game. The one thing I remember, and this is not even a real thing, but this is how my brain attaches to things is being in i think i must might have been in movie town or i think it might have been movie town at the time um waiting for another film to start and they played the trailer for one of the resident evils you all will have to help me but the trailer of itself i remember the, the thing that i remember is that it looks like a beauty a beauty or a pharmaceutical ad and then they show the face of somebody and then the face turns into like a dog and I remember thinking, oh, I could uh, maybe I should watch this because this looks like maybe it's science going wrong or something. And I never, like every time I I try to bring myself to queue it up, I'm like, you know what? I think I will just watch I, I don't know Star Wars again or something. <laughs> so that yeah. is that I, I is think my I did the second or the fourth one that had that that um, beauty ad and it was like a cover for the Umbrella Corporation thing. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. One of those, I'm not sure. Yeah. Or maybe the first one. Who knows? 